school German, I said, Ich bin hungrig. And I can't remember, it was a man, I think, and, and he went like that or something like that and came up, brought me a plate of milk or some milk and some bread. All of a sudden, a few minutes later, I saw these guys. <laughs> I like to think they were in leather shorts, lederhosen. They may not have been. But they were walking out. I do remember they had two of the biggest rifles I'd ever seen in my life. And I said to myself, Cook, you're not going to be a hero. And I took my 45 out, and I threw it as far as I could throw it. He said, well, you will talk to me before we're through. I'll guarantee you. So he said, if not, you'll be shot in the morning as a spy. Just because you're wearing those clothes don't mean nothing to us. You know, you could be a spy and still be wearing a, uh, an Air Corps uniform. So anyway, uh, I guess he was trying to impress a kid. He did. So as long in the mid-morning, I think, he called me back up there again, or had him bring me up, and, and he said, uh, you're not going to talk to me. And I said, well, I, you ask me all these questions. I, I don't know. I haven't, I can't even tell you. I, I was only there in that outfit for two weeks. I don't know the name of the commander. I, I don't know the name. I don't even know the name of the outfit I was flying with. He said, I have more information about you than you do. And he said, I, and he t commenced to tell me the day we left the States that we'd flown over what outfit we had when we went to Italy, then over to Corsica, everything. He said, I just wanted to see if you'd talk to me because you're very young. And he said, I'm sending three guards with you and they're not, they're not to try to keep you from escaping because I, have n I don't even care at this point whether you do or don't. If you do, you'll be shot. If you don't, think about it. He said, you've come this far in this war. We all know what's going to happen. He said, it's winding down rapidly. And he said, you guys know as well as I do how it's going to end at this point. Mind your manners. Do what's told. Don't do anything stupid. And you'll go home. That came from the German lieutenant. He was right. He told me where I went to high school, who my friends were, uh, when I shipped overseas, they had such detailed information on me that I'm, uh, my mouth fell open. I'm, I'm sure I confirmed everything that they uh, maybe didn't know by the expression on my face. They knew my CO. They knew when I what. They knew the time that I took off. Uh, everything, and I just was amazed. They knew every name on the crew. They knew where we've came from, Letty, the whole works. Two or three times a day or night, uh, there would be this clump of people walking by and then machine gun fire. And I said, shh, they're going to shoot me, you know. And uh, I said, but I'm, I said, uh, if they try to do that, I'll, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to break. I said, I'm an American soldier and I'm going to die like a man, you know. I, I really, you know, I was <laughs> nutty enough to, to really feel that way, but I thought they were going to kill me. I went into the camp and was processed, and while we were in there, over there, the Germans had a loudspeaker system. And in German, I, I heard the words, uh, Heute der Gosse Kampf in den Westen hat begun. And I, 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 there was a guy next to me. I said, what in the hell are they talking about? He said, the second front <laughs> has started. He said, we've invaded. The, Heute, today, the great battle in the West has begun. Well, that, that was the invasion day. So they, they told us, you know, with their loudspeaker system in German. And I, I kind of said, ah, oh, hell, we'll be out of here in six weeks. <laughs> and then <laughs> nearly a year later, I'm still there. The treatment wasn't too bad. You, you could get an angry guard if he had gone home for the weekend and his house was blown apart over, you know, while he was gone. He'd get pretty bitter. But uh, 
and they had places where we could walk outside and they had a wire about foot high, I guess, on pegs all the way around the compound. And if we set our foot on that, they would shoot us. And of course we knew that, so we didn't do it. And uh, as long as you do, did what you were told, I can't say that the treatment was bad. The worst thing about that whole experience was lack of food. And uh, the Germans themselves didn't have much. Probably the four, first four to six weeks were the hardest part of captivity. Uh, being captured is the hardest part, but the second hardest part of it then is trying to get used to being hungry because um, you get, as time goes on and you lose weight, you get a little more used to it all the time. Some days uh, they had very little and other days you had a small, maybe two inch piece of black bread would be your share and a small bowl of uh, some kind of watery soup. Sometimes it had meat flavor, sometimes it didn't. I remember a couple of times the only flavor you could get out of it was the rotten potatoes they'd used in it. Anyway, I lost about 40, 50 pounds in the first four to six weeks. And then after that, why well, you're just hungry, but you don't. It's not the foremost thing on your mind. Every day, at least twice a day, we all had to line up out in front of our barracks and they, Germans would count us. We lined up in fives, because that's the only way they knew how to count, I guess. Several times while we were out lined up, three ME-109s had come flying over. I don't know if they were training or coming back from a mission or what. I suspicion training. And they knew we were all flyers. So they'd buzz the field and peel off in wing overs, you know, showing off a little. Well, one day one of them peeled off and flew the thing right into the ground and blew up. And we all said, well, there's no way that guy could survive with 5,000 of us down there saying, blow up, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, we started cheering and doing stupid things, so they cut loose with machine guns over our head to calm us down, which did real quick. The Germans had a uh, fighter plane uh, factory about 15 to 20 miles from our camp and uh, they were bombing it one time and and the air raider had sounded and when the air raid sounded in our camp you had to stay in the barracks you didn't go outside and I was I was inside the barracks but I happened to look across there's a uh, one of our enlisted men in the camp was standing in the doorway and a German guard saw him and shot him dead I remember the first formation we had when we got there, they lined us all up and we all had standard attention. And he said, gentlemen, I must tell you this, escaping will no longer be the sport. Anyone trying to escape will be shot. And we all threw our hats up in the air and cheered. And a couple of days later, somebody tried it. And he had a nice funeral. Is escaping from Stanley 17B it wasn't like Hogan's Heroes and the movie. It was damn serious business. He was after to get shot. I remember one time I walked in the room and they were getting this man ready to go out the gate as a German officer or German soldier. And he had a German uniform on and he had a German rifle in his pocket. Heck, how'd he get that? Well, it was a German RAF uniform, which they'd changed a little bit and, and cast uh, the ornaments that go on the, on, the, on the uniform. 